Hey everybody, Dr. McKinley here. I'm with Matt Jacob, my favorite trainer, owner of uh, Rev One Fitness. Just happens to be a couple doors down from our clinic. Match made in heaven. Um, anyway, Matt's going to demonstrate some uh, common problems that that he sees with, uh, particularly with squatting, kettlebell use, and then he's also going to show you a really good post-workout uh, functional stretch or hold and. Uh, I absolutely love uh, the way Matt teaches. Matt actually uh, was a head trainer at a, at a local CrossFit here in Chicago for over 10 years. And as great as CrossFit is, he kind of saw a few things that uh, create overuse injuries. So Matt's a big fan of longevity and blue zones like I always talk about. This is one of the reasons that we love Matt at Rev1. So uh, check out Rev1. Anyway, Matt, take it away. Cool. Three most common things I see uh, people doing incorrectly in the squat is Number one, they start the movement with their knees. So they load up the knee joint first. It's really bad in the knee joint. The joint that you load up first is going to take the, load, the heaviest of the load. The knee joint, small joint, hips are a huge joint. Load them up first. Hips go back first as you go down, and then squeeze your glutes on the way up. That's number one. Number two, people let their knees cave in. This is really, really bad on your ligaments. Make sure that your knees track over your toes. So keep them out. Just a good cue is keep your knees out as you're squatting down. And then number three, I'll show you from the side, is people, I call it the glide. So they start up, hips go back, they load their hips up first, which is good. But as they go down, they start gliding forward. This is a weakness in the glutes. So, what I would do on that one is, if you've been squatting for a long time and you notice yourself doing that, use less weight, load up the hips first, get strong in the glutes, and then build the weight back up as you go. A quick stretch or mobility piece to do is to sit in this bottom belt squat. I sit in this squat for 30 minutes every single day. You should too. You don't have to sit in it 30 minutes at a time. You can build up to that certainly but you can just accumulate the 30 minutes over time. Two minutes here, five minutes here, three minutes here, however you get it. And then eventually over time, we'll just be able to sit here for 30 minutes at a day at a stretch. Uh, so I love doing this as well. What Matt said, I think one of the biggest points here that he talked about is people go too heavy. They're just all about you know, grabbing the heaviest kettlebell. I'm gonna get a better workout of, you know, form is critical. Another one of the great things I love about Matt is he's stronger than me in most functions, lighter than me, and older than me. Uh, I won't say his age, but I'm 43 and he's older than that. So he's making it look good. So we're, again, it's all about longevity, not about breaking a, a record on board, you write a, write a number down, but what did that do for your body? And then lastly, one thing I want to focus on, uh, I want to show them how they sometimes hit slide from the back. Sure, so if you just, Matt turn, turn, a lot of times you'll see someone go down, and as they come down on their SI joints, they'll slide off to one side, and then come back center, right, instead of going straight down. Now he's doing it on purpose here, he doesn't normally do it that way, but if you notice that, that's most likely a problem with your SI joint, and that would be something that we would evaluate in, in our clinic to, to help balance out. We probably need to take some x-rays or run a muscle test, but anyway, Watch that, really common. Even for those of you that are really good at squatting, you might have a lot of weight on, but you still, you're not coming down symmetrical. It's just a matter of time before you have an overuse injury. Hope that was helpful. Have a great day.